this started at our commission retreat actually I think this is a discussion that courts have all the time is what what should we prioritize what should we spend our money on um, what brings benefit to the community all these different things are weighed out so we started with our commission retreat and started discussing different priorities of projects and so that led us to probably my next slide is how how do courts set project priorities um, starting with how do we decide you know there's only so much money in the pot so how do we decide so we look at things like maybe a little different than some people but courts are pretty excited about jobs and investment in community um, so priority one what I did here and we did we kind of did this as an exercise at our retreat um, is I took our capital facilities plan for the next five years and I actually plugged in the, the capital projects that are on the list just to see where they fell in this in this matrix based on what the priority is. so priority one would be a capital investment directly resulting in new jobs and investment that's a new curve partnership project that we have on the books so we have not been formally approved yet that's coming in May and we're hopeful um, but that is something that will bring 25 jobs and a 30,000 square foot building on court property so that's a big deal Priority two would be capital investments, obviously, that may not create new jobs, but have a positive return. So that would be um, administration building for more for a tenant, not, we're not talking about replacing this building, but for a tenant, we have several tenants in several buildings, putting them all in one building or one admin building. Telemetry, that's our water system. I, I don't know if most of you know, but we do um, own and operate our own system, and that is the, of the nuts and bolts of talking to us here in the office and what our well levels are doing um, road repair railroad crossings all priority two they don't create a bunch of new jobs but they definitely make the infra infrastructure better priority three would be um, capital investment strategic in nature they have a reasonable chance to create new jobs so that would be maybe a commercial aquaculture dock we've talked a lot about that um, decommissioning the fairgrounds by that I really mean taking down those buildings so that actually hangars or some sort of um, aviation related use could be put there property acquisition at the marina and the airport there's definite interest in both areas for gaining more property for use Capitol Hill utility extension these are just running the utility lines further up the Capitol Hill Road to serve Johns Prairie area Priority four is capital investments to maintain or enhance infrastructure using primarily financial resources from others. That's always a great <laughs> opportunity. So um, things like the Marina Pier, we're, we're pretty sure that we could most likely go out and get a grant for that. It's public access. Um, the boat ramp, same thing. The runway or pavement overlay is slated to happen next year. We're getting that fully funded by 100% of FAA discretionary funds. Taxiway lighting, that would be same thing, discretionary funds. So those are all coming out outside of our funding sources. So that's good. And then priority five, these are investments that don't create jobs and they have a low probability of creating any return on investment. And that's the South Dock replacement. And I'm not saying that it's a bad thing. I'm just saying that it's lower on the priority than some of the other things that don't cost as much <coughs> only because they don't do what ports do. So, so that's all. So then, taking that into consideration, we move right into, we really have needs. We're full to capacity almost. We have one building that needs walls that is still ready to be leased. Um, or almost ready, I should say. So we, we compared the two. So we have a, a cost estimate, which I have on the next slide for the South Dock. I'll jump to that real quick. It's really, really hard to read. But that total cost tells us that it's going to be $2.8 million to replace the South Dock that serves 50-ish um, private moorage slips. So that's that. Um, we also have an estimate from a couple years ago on, it's a little bigger than 20,000 square feet, but a building that would be close to that for 2.6 million. So you can see kind of side by side, they're pretty similar. So how many jobs are created by that building? Well, 50 to 80 could be. Jobs created by the South Dock are zero. Um, jobs retained are 80. Um, jobs retained down the South Dock replacement, 10 plus or minus aquaculture jobs. Um, return on investment for a building would be port receives the new building and land lease and is paid back for the entire project through lease payments. Uh, return on investment would be 
New dock with pilings and electrical is paid back through higher mortgage rates. Who wins on the dock? Current and future tenants, 101 slips willing to pay higher mortgage rates. Who wins? The port taxpayers, Mason County business and eating space job seekers on the building. Who loses on the building? We can't really see anyone. And who loses on the south dock? Could be, not necessarily, but it could be that a current industrial tenant that needed to expand might not be able to expand if we couldn't build the building or they couldn't either. Port taxpayers maybe that don't utilize the, the marina. Um, these are just things that we look at when we're trying to prioritize projects. So again, not nothing negative, nothing, um, it's just reality. And then you go to the outlook of the marina current. We actually have seven vacant slips currently out of 101. The port, it has one slip. Um, the red indicates um, slips, it's really hard to see the slips that are red because they're just the number is red. But we have um, slips and boathouses that are red are, are not, they don't live in the tax district of the Port of Shelton and the green are that they do live. So the summary on that, it's really hard to read and I apologize for that, <laughs> is 23 boathouse owners and, let's see, sorry. 23 boathouse owners are in the port district, 41 boathouse owners are outside, 13 open slip tenants live inside, and 17 are outside. So all that considered, all that means is we're serving a wider variety than just our tax base, and that's fine. And then that's kind of what that indicates, that not saying there's only 36 voters, there could be double that, there could be triple that based on who lives in the home, but those are the residents within the 101 slips out of 14,563 registered voters in our district. So we have to look at that <coughs> in the bigger picture. So historically, the port took the marina over, um, or took it back, the management of it in around 2006, 2007. Um, since then we've spent, or we brought in about two and a half million dollars. So it's, we're looking only through 2017. Um, the expenditures just on the regular maintenance was a little over 900. Grants received, this is on that floating restroom, um, the pump out is about almost 200,000, so 195, 653. For total capital expenditures down there, projects, this is the coal property and dismantling of that, this is the pier upgrades, this is anything to do with the docks, any maintenance down there that are bigger than, so like the guest dock, bigger than just general maintenance is that 2.1 million. And so the net before GNA, which general administration kind of, I'll explain that in one second, but 339,193 loss. And then the total general administration charge to the marina over the course of these 11 years was about 12%. 1.6 million and where that comes from is we're basing it on revenue so we're taking all three properties dividing everything that happens that is included in all properties or like you know anything that's just total port wide and splitting that up by revenue which I think is fairly fair so that number over those 11 years is about 12% of the total so that brings a net loss over these 11 years of 1.9 million Wendy, just quick, 12% yeah, of, of what total? 12% of, it's it's really, that's a revenue, of a, the total um, port-wide port general administration. Okay. Yeah, the total port-wide general administration. Yeah, the costs, that's 12% of those. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Okay. This one's tough to see too, I apologize. So, um, I'm trying to steer it. So really these numbers across the top are the same as what you just saw. It's just showing that year by year, we really haven't seen, you know, with all costs included, all revenues included, we really haven't seen, um, you know, revenue. It's all been at a loss and some are greater than others, but that yellowed one is just showing the total. So that's all that is. It's just highlighted to show that that's the total of all 11 years. So then comes the, the project cost, and you're going to say, well, I thought the estimate was 2.8 million, why do you have 3 million? Only because there's always other things that we didn't think of or that that project cost estimate didn't include, and that would be things like our time. Um, 
maintenance time, anything else. So anything that wasn't included, we just rounded to three. Um, estimated interest rate, again, estimate completely, 6%. We have no idea. <laughs> so um, rates were running about five. The rates have been starting to climb. We're not sure what we're seeing. We know that this is a riskier project than most based on um, not long-term leases, that kind of thing. So we're just estimating on the high side. This may this may be a little off, but again, this whole you know we're just looking at estimates. Um, Twenty years, so principal's three million. Estimated interest is two point two million. That was horrid. <laughs> and then principal and interest together is that total of five point two million. And if anybody's super interested in that, we do have a T value paperwork back in the back. We, can always, we have lots of paperwork, so. And here's kind of the spread on that. So, so this kind of puts it into perspective of what this would mean per slip. Um, as I said, we have 101. Um, total cost per slip um, for 20 years would be $51,000. At that rate, again, a lot of assumptions built in there. Could be lower, could be more. Um, per slip cost would be 2005. And this is actually... Um, just spreading it over the entire 101. As I said, we're seven um, vacant right now, so we aren't sure where that would, where would that leave us? Would, you know, who would pick up the difference? So this is just dividing it, and then per monthly cost per slip would be 215 at those rates. Okay, I told you I wasn't going to talk very long, so I'm speeding. So then we go to, this is just our, our budget for the year is in that very first column, and then it just shows Sanderson Field revenues. This is just all our properties. You can see the different breakouts. As you spread out on the other side, you see Sanderson Field, you see Oakland Bay, you see Johns Prairie, you see non-operating, and you can just kind of see how things lie. It shows you that GNA cost that you were um, asking about. It shows how it's spread between the properties. Um, shows different things like when we go out for new debt, um, when we purchase capital assets, um, various things, all of the above. So any questions on that, you can definitely um, let me know. The, th the key thing, I think, on this sheet um, is if you look at the yellow column, the Oakland Bay Marina, this year we incorporated a $50 flat fee per slip starting in January. And really all that did in this picture is really make us zeroed. So $721 was our total operating income, and that, that just zeroed out what, and that, again, accounted for the slips at that snapshot in time. So that makes sense. And if anybody has questions, please feel free to jump in. I'm just trying to spill this out and let you guys talk. So we look at options. Now I've come up with a few options. We've talked about a few options. There are probably 10,000 more. So that's why where you come in, that's why hopefully you're here. Um, so, so alternative one, sell the marina. Um, our own comprehensive plan says that it should be self-sustaining. If not, we should think about selling. That's an option. Is it a good one? Well, it might be. The pros of that would be that we'd save these millions of dollars. We wouldn't be spending them on this project. Um, for projects that do create jobs, it'd be a reduction in administrative and maintenance staff time. We bring the port focus back to job creation and expansion. We'd um, possibly increase investment opportunities for private investors that do things a lot better than we do, restaurants, that kind of thing. We aren't really in that type of business. Um, the cons of that, it definitely could change or eliminate the current marina configuration. It could reduce public access. It also could maybe increase public access. Um, so that might not be a con, that might be a, a pro as well. Um, potential rate increases. Uh, the effect on the current marine attendants. You know, we're worried about that. We don't like this idea necessarily, but it maybe makes the most sense. So the second alternative could be just that we continue as scheduled. We're gonna upgrade that dock. The pros of that are that we get new docks on the south flow. We get upgraded electrical, old pilings are taken out and replaced. We retain the aquaculture jobs and existing recreational slips that are already there. The cons of that are that we're spending millions of dollars, again, that could be used otherwise to create jobs. Um, it limits our ability to borrow future money. Um, there could be a very dramatic rate increase for tenants. And I just told you, if we use that equation I gave you, it's 215 per slip. That's a lot of money per month. Um, solves the current dock problem that includes no reserves for future projects. So this is a one-time spend the money, fix the dock, and that's it. 
Um, we have concerns from taxpayers on that. Is, is there a concern that we're spending tax dollars that really supports this one dock? Um, risk losing industrial jobs due to lack of funding for expansion. Marina tenants would likely have to sign longer term leases. I know of one marina in the area that just recently is doing this and they had to sign five year leases. So just something that might have to happen. And then there's alternative three and that's the partnership or joint venture or private management. I think you guys are all kind of paying attention probably to some of the things going on in our area. Um, Port of Bremerton's looking at private management. Um, John Wayne Marina, so Port of Port Angeles, they're actually soliciting them, buyers are, for developing, development. So there's different things going on that, you know, whether they're going anywhere or not, they're all talking about different things. Um, pros of that could be it would ensure the future use of marina if we have the right partnership maybe we could do what we want to do we wouldn't expend all these funds and everything would be intact um, again there's that increased investment opportunity for others to come in and do something that we couldn't do or something right they could do a restaurant they could do some kind of other uh, related amenity um, cons of this I'm not sure if it's realistic, and the reason I say that, I love the idea, I just don't, I'm not sure that someone wants to partner without owning to spend that kind of money, but I could be totally wrong. Um, it's complicated. How do you word it? How do we keep our, I think one of those is increased liability. How does the port stay out of the liability of that if somebody else is either managing it or running it and then, and then when it falls apart, they just dart. I mean, then we're left with, you know, the liability of it. It's difficult to manage. Um, questionable maintenance. Uh, right now, you know, we take pretty, you know, we try to get down there and do what we can. I know it's, we're working with some of the <laughs> old stuff, but our guys do a great job. They get down there right away when they're asked, and, and could we count on that? And would there be any interest? Would there be an interest in somebody coming in and wanting to partner with us on that? So that's that. Leads me to what about that long. <laughs> so <laughs> any questions? So of course future meetings, that's for next, but you guys are welcome to come to the next. There's gonna be the same exact format. Um, but please let us know if you have information, questions, comments, email, phone. And now I'll turn it back over to the chairman to decide okay. what he wants to do next. Can we turn on the light? Okay, there's a sign up sheet back there. If every if anybody would like to talk or speak, please make sure you're on the sign-up sheet. We'll just go down the sheet. I'm not going to hold you to any time, but there's a lot of people here, and I'd like to hear from everybody that wants to speak. So keep that in mind while you're doing your uh, presentation or your discussion. What are, our, what are we available <coughs> back there for them to take? We do have um, cards. I think everybody hopefully got a little note card. Um, and there, we're hoping that you'll fill it out here and you can keep it anonymous. We don't have to know who you are unless you want us to know who you are, but it's just to give your opinion on a couple questions, items, and then the whole back is for yours to write. You can send us more if you need more room. We just did little postcards. So we just, uh, some people don't like to speak in front of people. So, but yeah, if you could turn those in on your way out so that we can collect them, that would be helpful. Okay, looking at the, the sheet, I'm just going to go down at the first one. The first person that said they'd like to speak is Wayne Krauss. Wayne? Hi, would you go to the podium, please, and tell us where you're from? Thank you. Um, I used to be a member down there, actually, a couple times. They finally said if I was good at that thing back in. Um, but the mortgage down there has always been kind of fluctuating based on its location, too. Uh, people can moor over in Olympia, which is handy, and it's way more expensive. I have a boat over there now, I'm running about $500 a month. So when you're talking about comparable rents or mortgage rates. Um, one thing I really wanted to get across, and um, I'm sure there was nothing meant in the newspaper article that way, but I just got two, uh, two phone calls since Thursday when the paper came out. People I knew from um, that voted years ago, and they're out of it. They wanted to know what happened, because they didn't belong to the Yacht Club. They wanted to know what happened to the management when the Yacht Club had it. And people will give pros and cons on this, but I, was, I, was, I joined the club in the middle 80s the first time, and I put quite a bit of time on projects working down there with people. I can absolutely guarantee you without a doubt, if the Yacht Club hadn't had that, there wouldn't be nothing there to sell. 
And that is not a joke, that's not an exaggeration. There'd be absolutely nothing there for the fort to sell if the Yacht Club hadn't been there. I just want to make that clear, because we, it's never been one-sided. It's not like the Yacht Club said, no, nobody else can moor here. It's never been that way either. It's always been, if you wanted to join the Yacht Club, you could. If you wanted to moor, you could. A lot of places aren't like that. In my opinion, they're not. The Yacht Clubs I've visited, some of them, they aren't too open for help. You want a yacht club. They have limited marina facilities, so that's about it. Sooner or later you get worked out, somebody else gets worked in. Um, a couple of other things that I, there's been a lot of details given here, which are great, but what's the value of the marina today? Yeah. I don't see that. What you say, right. Really, it's in the eyes of a buyer. Yeah, but I mean, we've got, we're getting all kinds of numbers here, but um, I'm not, again, this is not critical of anybody, sure. but to me, to make a decision on what I would do if I was down there right now, I would need to know what, what that's going to come up to. Is the marina worth 500000 or is it worth $8 million? I don't know. It's worth a dollar. It's worth a dollar? Or, or is it worth a dollar? Well, if it's for a buck, I'll take it. <laughs> um, and I'll work out the financing later. Yeah. <laughs> there's just some, there's just... <laughs> The partnership, um, that, that's not a bad idea in my opinion, I mean the partnership, is, um, but I think needing somebody to cooperate with the port, that's good, but the court would have, the port would have to cooperate equally with the partner. So the partner would have to know ahead of time that there weren't going to be any, any changes. And the reason I bring that up is because um, the last person that was managing for the port, for the mortgage down there, um, in my opinion, and quite honestly, left a lot to be desired to be a marina man, a representative of the port to manage the marina. That's, I think most people felt that way. Um, so, if you're gonna if you're gonna turn it over, like say half to half, does that mean the port is gonna work with the marina, or you work with anybody that comes up with half the money? Is, is that what we're talking about? Is they they assume the whole bill or half of the bill? You just have to, I mean, anything. Right, and for options. Okay. So right, looking for whatever options. But what would it take for the port? Because um, this is very logical and laid out really nice, um, but it's kind of on the derogatory side because it doesn't have a lot of advantages that you're looking for. So my question would be, is are you looking for somebody, a partner, that's going to bring up all the money or half the money or a quarter of the money? What are you willing to spend on the figures you presented today? Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know. So, I'm really not the person that should be up here because I don't have a financial background. But I go grocery shopping. <laughs> You're a taxpayer in the port district. Yeah. That's what. That's who we want to hear from. I think one thing too that you can place a value on a lot of things, but like we have the four special every year. Okay. People, if that doubled in cost, would we stop doing it? That's a that's a community thing. The Yacht Club has done a lot of things for the community. Anybody that, my opinion is, anybody that wanted to become involved doesn't have to be a member. We used to have special ed cruises. We've had the oyster deal. We've, we've used to have, I don't know if you still have it or not, to tell you the truth, but I haven't heard about it. You still have the free shuttle if you come in by boat to go up to the, okay? So they're, they, it's not just a one-way thing. If you were interested in getting something out of the marina, all you had to do is find out what's going on. So, I just, I just think that some things here are, um, you can't put a value on them. You just can't put a value on them. So I think that's part of the, I think that's part of the heritage of Shelton too. And I know that doesn't pin out for financial, but every once in a while they'll run a picture in the newspaper of the old port area down there, and you see the stern wheeler tied up to it. So. That's a, again, not a financial asset, but it is a local asset. So, I just think some of this is great. Everything I've seen so far makes, I don't know who came up with the 2.8 million. I don't know if we, if we received another bid. It's, it's just an engineering estimate. It's our engineering firm. But did, did we receive, did you receive another one or? We haven't gone out for bid for it. No, okay. yeah, it's not bid for construction yet. So this is just so I'll understand that yeah. I'm not being critical again. So this is kind of preliminary. We don't know what the marine's worth. We haven't got a comparison bit, right? And we haven't made any decisions here. Yeah, right. It's not. So that's, 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 that's why we're here. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Well, I just read, those are just the comments I had. And so now somebody can get up and knows what they're talking about. Okay, thank you. <laughs>
Uh, the next person that said they would like to speak is Tom Davis. I don't know, necessarily know if I know what I'm talking about, <laughs> but I am a taxpayer in the, uh, in the Port District. I do not live in the Port District, but I do own property. So when you take my money, you get me too. Um, in 1956, the, uh, the marina was developed. I was 10 years old, so while I was riding on my tricycle, uh, you were building a marina. <laughs> I respect that. Um, that. That marina has changed ownership a couple of times between uh, the you know, people who ran the Shelton Yacht Club and of course uh, my understanding is by around 2000 that marina was in a state of disrepair and by 2007 the port took it over and made significant uh, repairs at significant expense. Uh, having been a boat owner, um, and then once you are past being a boat owner, you are a little bit more critical about boat ownership. So, uh, so my, uh, although I'm former Navy, my heart is not uh, in, in yacht clubs. It is in economic development, however. So my feeling is, if you've had the yacht club since 1956, and if it's changed ownership a couple of times in terms of the administration, and if all that time you have not been able to turn it into uh, an economic asset or an amenity for the community to the point where we, we're not discussing whether to sell it or not, then my feeling is you probably already have made your, up your mind or the conditions have already made up your mind for you. So I would suggest, and I think you might be leaning in this direction because several years ago when I used to attend these meetings all the time, uh, and and uh, Mr. Dobson was here, he, he, he wanted to drop this like a hot rock. Uh, I, I have a feeling that, that this could be, uh, this could be, uh, that sentiment might still exist. And that's the kind of the point is not, again, not, not to be critical, but if you have a willingness and a passion, then chances are you're going to succeed in your endeavor. However, if you consider it uh, something that's hanging around your neck, then you're going to do the minimum amount that, that is required of you. And that's where I see the decision is to be made, not necessarily whether the, whether the yacht club should be fixed up and, uh, and, and slip rates increased and so on, but whether you want to do that. And so I'm going to go on the assumption, unless you tell me otherwise, that you probably see better benefit for that money in other areas of the port's economic growth and jobs and so on. Uh, and, I, and I might be wrong, but I'm going to go on that assumption until somebody tells me I am. So my feeling is at this point, if it's an economic decision, then the decision is probably that you should sell it. Uh, again, of course, how much you should sell it for is, is, is still way up in the air. But when you go to private enterprise, when you go to private, uh, the private sector, they turn a profit. Municipalities have to, have to benefit the community. The, the, normally speaking, the private sector benefits themselves or if it's a non-profit. Uh, the corporation, but they have to turn a profit. That means they have a, a, a certain amount of weight on their shoulders that their decisions are always to turn that profit. That's not necessarily fall in line with the, with the community asset and whether that falls in line with the community spirit and whether or not we, we the people in the community want a yacht club. It's just the bare facts of, of the matter. And so I would suggest that if, if you do not have a, a, a burning passion to, uh, to throw a lot of money into this with uh, the results which are uncertain, and I would have some ideas along those lines how to make, make it more profitable, then if you, if you transfer that burden onto the private sector, I guarantee you're going to have a higher chance of success. And when the private sector, in this case, succeeds, then because of its dislocation of this yacht club, the community in general would succeed and uh, uh, just be um, the positive impact would go over to the downtown area, and it kind of falls in line with improving that sector, might fall in line to improve the corridor and the access through. So you have a greater benefit. So in the end, the community benefits better, but whenever there's a benefit, there are winners and there are losers. And in this case, the yacht club and the people who own boats and have, by recognition, have put an awful lot of money into houseboats that this port demanded that they upgrade. So you have to take that part into consideration. So there might be some caveat in the lease agreement saying you cannot 
just wipe the slate clean. The nice thing about this is if it's considered an asset by the private sector, then they are willing to work with you. If it's not considered an asset, then you will just succumb to their demands or, or reject their offer. And, that's, and so everything kind of rises to, to the top when there's money on, on the table. Um, I would like to say that uh, it never made sense to me as a yacht club, uh, considering you had to go through uh, Hammersley to get to anything that looked like open water. You got an eight-foot uh, draft, you, you know, you got five knot currents going in and out. I mean, unless you're on a rowboat, you can count me out. But, uh, but it obviously has, has provided an awful lot of pleasure to an awful, awful lot of people. The idea is that any suggestions from here on in should provide more benefit to more people. So uh, that was the long way around uh, my uh, support of selling it to the private sector. Thank you. Mr. One Davis, direction, Tom. I, I, we're, not I, I, talk, we're not talking about the Yacht Club. That's a, thank you. That's a different group. Right. That, that's an entity that, of their own. They're a tenant in, in their building on Port Crawford. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the marina. And, Which it, is not and the a, lot, yacht club. a lot of the tenants are not members of the yacht club. Okay. So well, that's just. A, that's a <coughs> Tom, also, I, I'd like to clarify that because I think there are a lot of misconceptions out there. The marina docks were built by members of the yacht club. <coughs> the marina has always been owned by the port, and until 2007 the yacht club under an agreement with the port managed the marina and paid the port six thousand dollars a month over and above um, the rents that were collected and the maintenance that was done in 2007 the port took back the management of the marina and the yacht club is an entity that stands on its own we are merely a tenant in that yacht club building which we they also built and um, so while the yacht club has a definitely a vested interest in the future of the marina the um, capital the responsibility for the marina falls on the port the okay let, let me just um, and thank you for correcting me along these lines the but the yacht club is a tenant of the marina Yes. yes, in that building, in the Yacht Club building. Okay. We you, pay a monthly rent to the port. And if you sold yeah. if you sold the marina, the Yacht Club's ownership would, would or the administration would transfer uh, in terms of the agreement between the Yacht Club and the arena, the marina. It'd have to be an arrangement. It'd have to be negotiated, negotiated. Yeah. Sure. with the new owner. We have it would have to be negotiated. Yeah. Yes. Right. Okay, so it would be part of uh, Because it's a land lease, lease essentially. It's, it's a land lease. Right now. Okay. No, thank you for that correction. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Okay, Tom, um, Mike Byrne, did you? I can't read you. Did you? Would you like to speak? No, at this time. Okay, thanks, Mike. Okay, uh, nobody else has indicated that they would like to speak, but I'll Can open I it up. Vote? Sure. sure. <laughs> I did write no, but now I'm a yes if I could be brief. Okay. Please it's Scott on. Grout. I think I'm the last on the list of one of these, so. I can be brief, though. Okay. Yes. Uh, a couple of points. <clears throat> What's the percentage of vested interest in the Yacht Club or the port? Anybody throw a number at the wall that they won't be stuck with? What do you mean by vested yeah, interest? interest? Mm -hmm. Obviously, the Yacht Club's done a lot of legwork in the past, and they were previous owners on their own accord, no, or was no, it no, a, no, we we never, they were never The Yacht Club were never Managers, owners. excuse me. Uh, let's call uh, asset managers. Uh, is there a... Um, Possibility, and I didn't see it on the board. Correct me if I'm wrong. For the yacht club to take it back, you said it, not me. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm just kind of throwing it out there. And then I thought, why not the creation of a citizens' advisory board? Because I have found uh, in my many conferences, committees, and other things that I've been a part of with the shellfish industry that smaller groups usually tend to be more effective, as long as they're equitable and representative. And then I would also uh, ask about outreach that was done about this meeting. Uh, the only way I came to be about it, I am a port resident and I own a business here within the port district, was merely because myself and some other shellfish operators were talking on the phone and people of my father's vintage generation failed to act quite frequently, which is the easiest thing for them to fail to do. I stopped and my eyes were widely opened quite positively. 
So with that said, even further, um, you had mentioned you know, about the five-year capital project improvement plan that talked about your work and also with railroads and things like that. Correct me if I'm wrong, it sounds like there's no sewer hookup to the marina now, correct? Correct. But yet it stops right at the railroad track currently owned by the federal government where the overpass is? Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't go that far. No. Well, yeah. I, I think it goes pretty close to like where the old dog pound was. So is there going to be any kind of consideration in a public works expansion to include maybe the marina with the city of Shelton's? That would help improve water quality. I'll tell you, you know, less effluent in the water is better, but that's just me for my... Well, we don't put any, if we, you know, we don't discharge in the water now. Uh, well, actually, if you uh, were to talk to the Department of Health, they use models that are quite antiquated, and I could talk about those in a different scenario, uh, that say that each boat on a commercial dock represents a certain static number of effluent. Guilty or not, it's guilty by association. Uh, that's why, like right now, the uh, uh, that's a cr closed area because of, you know, not only the sewer treatment facility that seems to have issues, uh, but expansion of a sewer pipe would mitigate any potential impact, like you have a pump out there. If your pump out station is merely you run another line up to the sewer, the, the city's sewer line, you've reduced the possibility. It's like a double hole in a boat. They learned after Valdez, two holes in a tanker does less environmental damage when issues happen. Um, but you had also talked about how the South Dock raises zero jobs. With that said, while that's something contestable, is there any possibility that you could ask the Department of Ecology for a lift on the number of flepsies you currently have down there from, I believe it's 10, to 12 or 14 where you do have a couple of open lots and then maybe shirk or uh, shield the non-resident, I think you had said it was 41 live outside the county or the uh, taxing district for residency on the moorage. I wrote it down so it has to be true. Um, maybe a two-tier rate system. Why should taxpayers that provide the service pay the same rate, it's like out of college or out of state tuition? Those that aren't from here, non-residents, should have a higher impact fee. It's only equitable, just for my opinion, but I don't vote there, so. Um, I, I would definitely urge before the next meeting, possible outreach, maybe empower staff to have a better outreach to uh, some of the logging families, some of the shellfish families. Um, I was going to have more people here today with me, but because you schedule it kind of around low tide, it's, it's kind of, and, and it's daylight, uh, it's just kind of one of those things where I, I was uh, unduly forced to be here. Um, so with that said, you had mentioned cost overrun caps and a 6% interest rate on the $3 million for the expansion project. I, I, I keep going back to this citizen's advisory board. Maybe between at least, let's say, now and the last meeting, uh, getting the outreach to be increased, you may need a little bit more room by what I've seen here today, which is good. Um, but getting a citizen's advisory board that you can bring up these issues, either independent, you can have subcommittees, that way you can have another body working on a topic with a very insular approach that can report back to the commissioners, doesn't need to be elected positions, literally raise a hand. Uh, like I said, smaller groups are much easier and faster to get things done. So uh, my final point is, uh, somebody mentioned the boat and everything. Everybody knows what boat stands for, right? Better off adding thousands. <laughs> so if, and I agree with everybody, navigating through Hammersley, I'll tell you what, if you, even if you know where the sandbars are, and you go through in October and you come back in February, you can hit stuff you didn't know was there before. <laughs> um, so that's why I've always asked when you had mentioned, you know, the practicality about coming into Shelton, Yes, one day a year they offer uh, trips up to Oyster Fest, which I think is great. You have no transit service. Where's the transit representatives here? Nobody. Uh, where's the larger shellfish companies that currently want to keep aquaculture where it is and maybe even expand and create more jobs in the district? Anybody else here from one of the big three? I don't see them. Uh, you know, Mankey's, Sierra, Green Diamond. I think there's a lot of potential. And pulling the pilings could really be a good thing, too, if they do it right. So, uh, Oh, the final thing is on the boat launch. If you could get grant funding, which you said you could because it's a public boat launch, why not pull the pilings that are creosote, get rid of the uh, negative impacts you get from creosote pilings, put in something more um, environmentally neutral, 
dredge it because that's a really and then you would also by dredging it also improve the value of the south dock which on a minus tide from a shellfish perspective with there's you can walk out there so there's steps I think you could do if you were to get the right people in the room I've been to the site once if I were to go down there a couple more times and there was a citizens advisory board if I can't become involved I will have staff do it like mr. Nelson here I have people that would be willing to get on board because I think it's an asset we shouldn't even consider liquidating but I do like the idea of a joint venture but that's it. okay thank you thank you okay anybody else that hasn't signed up would like to speak my name is Neil Stolberg. I had a boat till December, I had a boathouse till February, and uh, now I'm not in the marina. I am in the yacht club. And I just looked down here at the, uh, the estimate. And isn't there an opportunity here for some major value engineering? You know, just, I'll go back on some of the history that Sue said there is. My understanding of history is that the yacht club built the marina, but all of the materials were furnished by the yacht club. I know there's some yacht club people here. Is that everybody's understanding? So, so the board actually provided all the materials. And the marina was built on a shoestring. And it's 60 years old, and it was built on a shoestring. And now we're talking about putting in Bell Harbor. I mean, it just seems to be galvanized pilings. That's the best you can buy. There's got to be a way to, you know, devalue or lower the, uh, the cost of building that, uh, that marina and maybe get it down to where it's, you know, somewhat more reasonable. You know, maybe we shouldn't be focusing on having a marina that's going to last the next 60 years and maybe at this point make it shorter. It sounds like there's going to be a lot going on at the waterfront area of Shelton over the next 10 years or so. And I'd sure like to see the marina be a part of it. It's a big reason why we moved here. That's it. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Well, we're going to have... Yes, sir. I guess I'm going to ask more questions than... Oh, there's speak. one of them. Hmm. But, um... I've already, I've already spoken to some individual members of the commission, and then uh, we. Um, Please state your name, so we can. Uh, Scott Galatly. Thank you. Um, member of the, the uh, aquaculture community here. Um, the Department of Ecology, um, as I understand it, has limited the number of flupsies as a because the history of ports in the state is when the state was originally set up it was to allow public access and I don't know if that's in the Constitution but it's a public policy that's been going on since founding the state I believe or 1899 or something like that um, and to that end um, as Scott was saying uh, what is the approach or the possibility of this expansion he spoke of and getting Department of Ecology to change their um, policy to limit to 10. Um, two years ago, we met uh, originally to look at um, getting more aquaculture in there. And I looked around there and there was boathouses for sale. People didn't want to um, retrofit as required and would have you know, done away with it. But I came up against that block of limitations but um, if you get more renters down there um, aquaculture and the current uh, not marina people per se but just boat owners um, there's more cash flow obviously and if you could build upon that uh, I would think that it would be a win-win situation but as it is now there's a, a blockade on that and I don't know how you would change that um, if you did, to make it more flexible, um, that would go a long way to help out getting more renters down there. And then there was the, and then you've also done the cap, uh, capital um, grant of six million, which I would ask, like to ask more questions about. It covers how much and how large of a commercial footprint would be put down there, and what exactly are the courts or the ports plans on what that would entail, I guess. Can somebody address that question? That's, that's on our uh, five-year CIP, uh -huh. or CFP, Capital Facilities Plan, and it was just to entertain the idea. I think we were guessing. I mean, we don't, we have so the grant is not a hand that hasn't been? There is no, no grant. No, no. no. Oh, there's no we grant. assumed for commercial 
uh, yeah. aquaculture, we, that's, we could go after I guess that's, okay. that's right. yeah. That's just a planning document that we Okay, it's, it's a, not even a budget, it's just kind right. of a no. but I And I want to say that the uh, $3 million is only to replace the existing south dock. It does not include expansion of the marina at all. The, the existing south dock needs to be replaced. It's in, it's had a lot of weather so damage and whatever. So six million be on top of that for a total of nine and for No, well I'm, I'm not sure where you're getting the six million. The three million evolves into 5.8 million after you add in interest on the loan. But the actual cost of replacing the dock is somewhere in the neighborhood of 2.8. I think, but, it's, but, I think what you're talking about is our, our five-year CFP, and further years out, we put sure. a placeholder for a commercial aquaculture dock, and we put in the price oh, tag of $6 million. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I just I yeah. saw the words and right. assumed that it was going forward that way, but it's not. That's okay. But, um, that's my next question. Mm -hmm. But um, because it's an asset both ways, um, and I... I think you can get more people interested, at least from the aquaculture sense. Hopefully, I can comment on who and exactly how much. But it's there's other <coughs> issues with ecology um, and regulations and a lot of uh, political type um, questions um, that need to be answered. Uh, City of Shelton, um, their regulations, <coughs> they're changing now. They're, uh, Commission to whatever it is back and forth, the council to commission, whatever it is. Um, that would come into play, although I guess you're only dealing with one entity instead of two now. That's better. Uh, but anyway, yeah, that would be, I believe it would be an asset there by it would grow it out and distribute the risk, I guess, to a certain extent. And I don't know how you would do a, a joint venture. That's well beyond. Um, it's a great idea, but how you would split that out politically is, it's a, could be a financial minefield. So that's the wrong word. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wrong word to use in a marina. Such as bottom, you know, it's the bottom of the bay. No, it it's the end of the bay. Uh, but anyway, because uh, I think it would overall be a, a great um, asset to, to uh, improve upon it. And the dollars would be driven uh, both. I am a taxpayer in the district uh, more than once. But anyway, that's not that big a deal. But yeah, I'd like to see my taxpayers a compliment. Uh, when we talked about this two years ago, a compliment uh, Commissioner Taylor for saying, I got to watch over the taxpayers and all. And I'm all in favor of that. Uh, to, to do that, but to try to get more dollars coming out of that marina so that. I'm not saying my taxes will go down, but the dollar values that you've got in the bank has gone up, and I'd like to see it go up even more so. But anyway, uh, some good ideas from the commissioners here on the port to do something a little different. What that would be, I'm not quite sure at this point. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, yes, sir. I guess I'll say a few words. Okay, can you here. give us your name, please? Uh, Ian Child. Okay, Ian. Uh, I'm with a small company, has a Flopsy down there in your marina currently. And I guess I'm one of the small slivers where I'm not in the port, my residence is not in the port district, but I own property and I'm also a tenant. So uh, on your project comparison, I just wanted to clarify a little bit. On the South Dock replacement, jobs created zero. Uh, I'm not sure where that comes from. We're always adding, everybody's growing this down there a little bit. And the number of retained jobs is currently higher than 10. There's 10 leases and go out more than one. And as we do more, you know, it's not just those 10 jobs. That's their job at the marina, but those oysters are on a beach, they're harvested, they're sold. So it's 10 jobs that create the whole string. So the economic portion of it is a little bit skewed. And as the first gentleman stated, I think if you're behind something, it's going to succeed. You know, what you put your time and effort into is what 
transpires. So hopefully, uh, I don't want your job, I'll tell you that. This is amazing. I mean, uh, the 2.8 is crazy when you think about it. When you walk down the south dock, every step I take is worth $20,000. Every three feet. I wish the Yacht Club would come back and maybe put together, you know, 60 years, let's get 30 out of it. I'm 50 something, so I think 30 will get me through it. Other than that, uh, I think aquaculture is here to stay. We are good tenants. We're there all the time. We are definitely contributing to the cleaning of the environment. Uh, it would be strange to have a port of Shelton without a port. Uh, <laughs> shallow as it is, scary as it is to get in there, it's still a port. So uh, it's part of the history here, and uh, good luck to you. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else? Can I just ask a question? Does the Department of Ecology have anything to do with the selection of 10 plumpsies? I thought that was something yes. negotiated between the port and the city. And the Department of Ecology. Well, the they were involved. Okay. Of course. Okay, we're going to have two more scheduled meetings. Uh, the next one will be the 14th of April uh, here at 10, that's a Saturday, 10 o'clock in the morning for anybody to come. And the last one will be uh, the, eight the eight Wednesday, the 18th at uh, 7 o'clock in the evening Six. here. Six? Six? Okay, sorry. We're going to change that. Okay. So that's the 18th at uh, 6 o'clock here, the 14th at 10 o'clock, that's a Saturday, at 10 o'clock in the morning in this building. So and as far as outreach on how we let this go or notified, uh, we gave a notice to every uh, news agency in this county. Uh, the Journal, the two radio stations, or the radio station, uh, to Diedrich's uh, Mason County, or Mason Web TV. Uh, so they're all there, and I don't know, maybe does that show how much people watch And all these? our tenants. And all our tenants. All our tenants. And our so, notification group, they normally get the notifications. Yeah, and we have, a, we have a list of that we send out notifications to that hits everybody. So if we're not hitting everybody, who more can we notify? And maybe it's, a, maybe it's an idea of who reads what's printed in, in the world today. Well, we actually put it in our Facebook. It's in our website. We put it in our half-page uh, ad in the newspaper. So uh, I don't know. Let us know if we can do more. Okay, let's get, get together and bring it. Okay, if there's no further comment. Oh, yeah, don't forget about the cards. Oh, the cards, please. If, if you would fill out a card. Uh, you don't have to leave your name on it, but we just like it for, if you want to put your name on it, that's fine. But let us know and we'll use it to collect your, collect your, your thoughts and your presentations. And if anybody has more suggestions, more comments, more, I mean, you know, let us know. You know, we, we really, this is all this is about. This isn't, no decisions have been made, no, and maybe it seems um, derogatory or that we're swaying one way or the other. It is just purely, you know, trying to put facts in front of this is nothing, nothing to say. Yeah, no There's right or wrong answer. So please let us know. Anyway. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much for coming. Yeah. We're adjourned. Thank you.